Hello and welcome to the Foilless TV. This is a video idea I've been kicking around for a very long time. As I'm recording this, it's currently early February of 2022, and it seems that tournaments are slowly returning to normal. So now seems like as good a time as any to finally pull the trigger and publish it. Even for very experienced fencers, the international tournament scene can be pretty confusing, and the FIE doesn't exactly make it easy to figure this stuff out on your own. Hopefully this video will serve as a general overview of the relevant parts without getting too lost in the details. While this channel is focused mainly on foil, most of this information will apply to all three weapons. So let's answer the question, how does international fencing actually work? At any international tournament, the two main things the fencers are competing for are medals, which are shiny and fun to collect, and World Cup points, which are used to determine a fencer's world rank. The FIE designates six types of tournaments that can give World Cup points. First up are the Olympics, which hopefully everyone here already knows about. Obviously, they're by far the most important tournament in any fencer's career. They offer the most points, they only happen once every four years, and they have a really tough and complicated qualification process, which I won't get into here. Only about 35 fencers compete in each individual event. World Championships are held only on non-Olympic years, at least from 2020 onward. They offer fewer points than the Olympics, but they have a much less restrictive qualification path. There's just a cap of four fencers per event per attending country, so you often see well over 100 fencers per individual event. Grand Prix, and yes, that is the correct plural of Grand Prix, give fewer points than the World Championships. There are typically three of these per competitive season per weapon, and they feature both men's and women's events for their respective weapons, but no team events. World Cup tournaments give fewer points than Grand Prix, and there are typically five per season per event. Some of these have both men's and women's events, but most don't. Like Grand Prix, they only feature one weapon, but World Cup tournaments do include team events. All of the tournaments I've mentioned so far have some structural differences from the typical format of pools followed by a direct elimination table for their individual events. The Olympics don't have pools at all, just DEs, and they're the only type of individual tournament to feature a bout for third place. The other three tournament types have 16 spots in the DE round of 64 reserved for the top 16 fencers in the current world ranking. Another 16 spots are reserved for the top 16 fencers from the pool round. The remaining fencers, who aren't eliminated after the pools, fence DE rounds until 32 fencers remain, who are then placed in the bottom half of the final table of 64. Tournaments that follow this format take two days, with the pools and preliminary DEs on the first day, and the round of 64 onto the finals on the second day. The next two types of tournaments follow a more familiar format, of one round of pools into one table of DEs, with no reserved spots or skips or anything of that sort. First, there are the Zonal Championships. These are similar to World Championships, except they're region restricted, meaning only fencers representing European countries can compete in the European Championship, and so on. The four regions are Africa, Asia slash Oceania, Europe, and the Americas. There's one per season for each zone, and they give the same number of points as World Cup tournaments. I should note that these are not the same thing as the zonal qualifiers for the Olympics. Those are separate tournaments that happen only on Olympic years and don't give any points. And finally, there are satellites. I believe the FIE caps the number of satellites at like 29 or something per season, but according to the FIE website, there are usually only 7 or 8 per season per weapon. These give almost no points, none at all for finishing below the top 8. You rarely see the highest ranked fencers competing at these because of the way world rankings are calculated. On that note, how are the world rankings calculated? It's a bit complicated. First, you take a fencer and look at all of their results from the last year. Add up any points they've earned at the Olympics, World Championships, and Zonal Championships. Then, add the points from only their five best results from all the other tournaments they've competed in. That's the number of points you'll see on their FIE profile. That top five results rule means that if a fencer has earned more than four points at five World Cups and Grand Prix in a season, even winning first place at a satellite wouldn't actually gain them any points. That's why top-ranked fencers usually don't compete at satellites. If two fencers are tied in points, the fencer who got more first place finishes, irrespective of tournament type, is ranked higher. If those are equal, they compare the number of second place finishes, and so on and so forth. At the end of each competitive season, those world ranking calculations are finalized, and the person at rank 1 wins the World Cup for that season. This can be a bit confusing, as we basically have two different types of champion in fencing. 
the Olympic or World Champion, who's the winner of that year's Olympics or World Championship, and the World Cup winner, who had the highest world rank at the end of the season. Although the Olympics and World Championships do give a lot of points, it's actually a very rare feat for the same fencer to win both the World Championship and World Cup in the same year, at least in men's foil. It's happened quite a lot in women's foil, for some reason. And I haven't forgotten team events, either. National teams consist of three fencers plus an alternate, chosen by their country's national organization. Team points are attached to the team, not the fencers on the team, so the countries can choose whoever they want for their team lineups. It's not uncommon for a fencer who isn't a regular member of their country's team to be ranked higher individually than a fencer who is. It's also not uncommon for a team lineup to change completely from tournament to tournament. Other than that, team points work pretty much the same as individual points. There are no team events at Grands Prix or Satellites, but the five World Cups have team events, as do the Olympics, World Championships, and Zonal Championships. Only the four best results from World Cup tournaments go into the calculation, as opposed to the five used for the individual rankings. And just like individuals, the World Championship and World Cup are often won by different teams in the same season. Now, let's take a look at the seasonal tournament schedule. The competitive season officially lasts one whole year, from September 1st to August 31st. The Olympics, or World Championship, is the last tournament of the season, and it usually takes place in mid-July, with the Zonal Championships taking place in June. The other tournaments usually fall between September and May. Grand Prix and World Cup tournaments have to be spaced at least two weeks apart, but satellites don't. Before the 2018-19 season, all the Grand Prix, World Cup, and satellite tournaments were interspersed throughout that September to May range. However, starting around 2018, a noticeable shift happened where now all the satellites happen in September and October, about one every week, and then the World Cups and Grand Prix take place between November and May. I don't know if there's a specific reason for that, as I can't find anything about it in the FIE rules. That's just been the pattern for the last few years, and I assume it'll continue that way. While the Zonal and World Championships are held in different locations every year, the Grand Prix and World Cup tournaments tend to be held in the same places every year, though they might happen at different times in different seasons. In foil, the three Grand Prix have usually taken place in Turin, Italy, Anaheim, California, and Shanghai, China in the last few years. The World Cup locations aren't set in stone, but the usual men's foil events include the Challenge Internationale de Paris in France, the Leuve von Bonn in Germany, the Prince Takamedo World Cup in Japan, and the Cairo and St. Petersburg World Cups. In women's foil, there are usually World Cups every season in Samor, France, Tauber Bischofsheim, Germany, and one somewhere in Poland. The other two have been moving around in the last few seasons. Satellites tend to come and go a bit more often, but there have pretty consistently been one in Copenhagen, one in Barcelona, one in Amsterdam, and one somewhere in Mexico each year. If you're watching this video in the future, and you want to know what your current season looks like, the FIE maintains a schedule of upcoming tournaments on its website, which is linked in the description. In fact, pretty much all the information in this whole video can be found somewhere on the FIE site, though it can be a bit of a pain to comb through and find exactly what you're looking for. Hopefully this video is a good summary for anyone following the international fencing scene. If you're competing internationally yourself, then hopefully nothing in this video will be new to you. And of course, even though things seem to be slowly returning to normal, nothing is set in stone. If things do change, and this video becomes obsolete, I will update it when I get a chance. Let me know if you want to see more videos similar to this one, about topics adjacent to the fencing itself. And, as always, until next time, stay sharp.